Breakpoint, 15 countries, 12 finalists, one amazing vision. Empower Caribbean companies to take on export markets. Over 13 weeks, we meet more than 30 companies selected from over 15 Caribbean countries. We follow their journey, from their first coaching sessions at the University of the West Indies School of Business in Barbados, where they not only learn the fundamentals of business communication, but have all of their presentations individually reviewed and critiqued by business development educators. Amazing advice, unparalleled insight. Dedicated entrepreneurs vying to convince four judges to choose their company to be among the 12 finalists who travel to London to make their final pitch in front of angel investors, distributors and retailers that could change their future and move them forward. Over the last eight weeks, we've followed the journeys of 30 companies and for 12 of them, that journey has led all the way to London for their opportunity to present their business proposals to industry moguls. Breakpoint is an initiative of the Caribbean Export Development Agency designed to give regional businesses the training and opportunity to expand into the European market. Last week on Breakpoint. I am very puzzled as to why you're approaching the market the way you are at all. And we kind of like went on the path of least resistance, but, but ultimately... But you've chosen the path of most resistance. Toted has capitalized on the opportunity for ethnic foods, Spicy foods and healthy foods. I'd like to speak to you after. Well done, I'm already out there in, in the world now. I think your presentation is weaker than your company. I think you have a company that's a hidden gem, but you haven't done us the favor of presenting that. Let's meet tonight's notable investors. UK media mogul Mark Lewis has carved out an impressive niche as a music and TV producer, having run his own recording studios and publishing company alongside his video and TV production enterprises. He has produced hit records and club remixes for artists such as Mary J. Blige, P. Diddy and Ja Rule. I'm passionate about the Caribbean, I'm passionate about business, I'm passionate about entrepreneurship and I'm passionate about innovation. So I think this was the only place that I could logically be at, at, at this point. The, 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 the focus of bringing so many Caribbean innovators to one forum to seek um, advice, investment and networking is something that um, is, 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 is definitely overdue and I'm sure that the event will grow in, in, in stature on a year-by-year -year basis and I think it's been extremely productive. Young entrepreneur Alexander Amosu turned his interest in technology and the mobile phone industry into a commercial success story and became a millionaire at age 25. He has been ranked in the top 100 of the UK's most powerful business people in technology and telecoms by The Telegraph and was an investor in the Nigerian version of BBC's Dragon's Den. I'm always looking for opportunities to add to uh, my luxury group, um, business ideas that may be of interest or can fit the demographics of uh, the group itself. Um, you know, it's just about ideas, you know, something that can make me more money, pretty much, um, it's worth a good investment. Um, but yeah, it's an exciting thing to do, um, so why not? Driven and successful entrepreneur Jonathan Fowle established the Rockstar Mentoring Group in 2007, which has companies in three parts of the world. Even though he's still in his 30s, he has already mentored over 50 people with great success. I decided to be involved with Breakpoint because I think it's a fantastic opportunity for business owners from various parts of the Caribbean to expand their organisations into the UK, one which I'm very passionate about helping businesses from outside of the UK invest and get their businesses and products in. Preeminent businessman Doug Richard has over 20 years experience in the development of technology and software ventures. He was a featured investor in the first two TV series of Dragon's Den and has been a guest lecturer on entrepreneurship at Cambridge University. I decided to be involved with Breakpoint partly because I'm always interested in new young companies. I have a long-standing relationship with the Caribbean because I used to work there when I was young. And finally, I'm working with uh, Caribbean Export in the hopes that we can bring some of our programs into the Caribbean. Let's now take a look at the criteria for Breakpoint. The candidate must show a clear opportunity for the product in the market. The firm must demonstrate a competitive level of product and innovation. There must be a compelling position on which to build the brand. The product must be in a position to benefit from the advantages of the EPA. The firm must be able to show market readiness for entry in less than six months and the candidate must be able to show industry knowledge and possess management and leadership experience. It's been quite a journey for the candidates. Back in the Caribbean, the first step was to submit a video pitch 
the successful firms met with top mentors at the Cave Hill School of Business in Barbados for analysis of their business model and advice on presenting their pitch. The candidates moved forward with their new skills to the regional pitches, which took place in three countries, Barbados, St. Lucia and Jamaica. Leading Caribbean businessmen and women judged their presentation and business plan and decided who would win a chance to pitch in London. We begin with the bespoke jewellery producer Christian Fries from Barbados. The regional judges were impressed with his business model and immediately realised the company's potential. With the right partner, it could develop into a very interesting brand. I think it's a potentially successful business model. Sole proprietor Keith Shepard gave a solid presentation at his regional pitch in Barbados and was as passionate about his company as he was about his custom jewellery. The name of the company um, is actually the name of my first son. Um, it's to remind me of how precious the company is and my passion for jewellery is also to convey to the customer something of value. Since inception, Christian Fries Jewellery has enjoyed strong brand positioning in Barbados and the Caribbean. This is due in part to the rigorously high standards demanded of craftsmanship and quality of raw materials. Now on the verge of making his pitch to angel investors and venture capitalists, Keith Shepard was feeling satisfied with his preparation and undaunted about the task ahead. I'm feeling pretty good, pretty good. I'm well prepared, pretty confident in my stuff, pretty confident in my pitch. I think we can score. See how Keith performs as the first presenter to angel investors and venture capitalists in London on Breakpoint. Custom jewellery producer Christian Fries prides itself on its quality of craftsmanship and is looking for an opportunity to break into Europe. Sole proprietor Keith Shepard makes the first pitch of the day to a panel of angel investors and venture capitalists in London. Good morning, my name is um, Keith Shepard. Um, I'm the CEO of Christian Fries Jewellery. The reason for Christian Fries Jewellery, it's the name of my son. I, I live in Denmark um, and while at a party um, four years ago, I happened to make a pair of earrings and give it to a guest. I, I give it to uh, um, the, the host, sorry. The host showed it to the guest and the guest said, um, where, where's the guy that made this? Um, can I see him? Sh she, of course, brought him to me. I'm feeling a bit um, weird because here's a man asking me about earrings. That, um, he says, um, you made this? I say, yeah. you made it by hand? I say, yes. He says, um, can you make, um, no, he says, you need to come and see me. So I then <laughs> said, um, who are you? And to which point he said that he was, um, he's the financial manager of Dance Markel. Um, it's a supermarket conglomerate in Denmark. They buy masters. He says, if I can come to him, um, he will put me in line immediately. He had some requirements. He says, hey, they, want, they were looking for handmade jewelry. They're looking for jewelry with a story. He also explained that the European customers are no longer just customers, they're customers with conscience. They would like to know that the stuff that they make, that they buy, actually comes from, it's um, handmade A, it has a story B, that it's not coming out of a Chinese sweatshop. Um, because of the market at the moment, individuals, according to the, the Netherlands Foreign Ministry, they're saying that the marketplace is moving to higher quality jewelry for more price and more value. M looking to jury more of, uh, as a story or, or an investment. For that reason, we, we established Christian Freeze, where we actually created a company that has a very strong brand story. We're making jewelry in Barbados. Um, we're making jewelry, handmade jewelry. I've spent the last three years teaching, um, teaching 200 persons so that we can actually have capacity to supply here in, in Europe or, or in Denmark, so to speak. Um, my experience, I have 20 years in jewelry making. Um, Specialization, specialization. I'm specializing in um, Scandinavian textile techniques for jewelry making, which means I can turn wire or metal into a kind of a fabric and then turn that fabric into really luxurious jewelry. Techniques. I have at my, uh, at my uh, available to me 300 plus techniques that I can use. These are techniques ranging back a thousand years, some of them 1300 years. Bits and pieces that from Asia to, to, to Europe that have been used to make jewelry before that can now be applied to jewelry to make it. Um, our design, like I explained, I would like to say it's, it's a new concept for us as a Caribbean and a, and a Scandinavian um, march. We also tr have trained our own subcontractors in Barbados, but we're also open to manufacturing here um, in the West Midlands or um, possibly China if, if the need so arises. We would like distribution of medium, high-end boutiques or clothing and uh, accessory chains here. We would like definitely mentoring on how to get into the marketplace here, establish a brand here in, in, in England. We will also like 150,000 pounds to 25% of our company. At the moment, we have 
350,000 Barbadian dollars worth of jewelry that is waiting to be marketed. This is my presentation, so to speak. Keith had represented his company well, and investor Jonathan Fowle wanted to know more about his price point. Those three necklaces there, what would you be selling, just, just for argument's sake, in terms of the pricing, those three necklaces which are on, the, uh, on, on those uh, uh, stands just there, what would they sell for? This necklace, we, 40 pounds in Barbados. 40 pounds. It's sterling silver, Swarovski crystal, 40 pounds. It takes three minutes to make. Four zero, 40 pounds? 40 pounds. Okay. It takes three minutes to make. It's um, sterling silver cable, um, Swarovski um, crystal pearls, and it takes about three minutes to make with two persons. Okay. Um, the same, that's the same. This one, actually, it takes a bit more time in with name. We would have to sell this in so many area of about 350 pounds. Okay. The reason is we're importing, um, these are black rutile semi-precious stones. We bought them from India, and of course, we manufacture the, the bezels and all the bits and pieces. Okay, thank you. So I fully understand the whole picture. You're currently in Barbados selling this at the moment, is that right? Yes, or Denmark? Yes. Barbados. 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 And you mentioned you had a deal with this gentleman who had a store in Denmark. No. It's not, it's not a gentleman. This is the Dan Supermarket. It's yeah. a large buying consortium for several supermarket chains in, in Denmark. Okay. One and, place by his own. And you have a <coughs> arrangement with that? Yes. I, need is, to, I can approach him as soon as I'm able to have capacity to supply. It took us two years to reach this stage today. Right, so you're, currently you're not in capacity to supply uh, this? No, uh, I have the capacity now. I've taught for two for three years and I now have, if they want handmade jewelry and they want 10,000 pieces, 50,000 pieces, we you can, can provide. Do it. We can do it in, in 90 days. So the question is, how come you're not? Um, because we've spent the last three years teaching. We've just finished. This. Just now, today. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, this would be my first effort towards moving from the, the teaching and, and, and capacity building stage into the actual supply and, and stage. Because yeah. I'm just wondering, because obviously if you had this opportunity to upscale... Um, why, why not? Yeah. Because it, it is impossible. I, if they give me an order, if I took, went to the meetings and they give me an order, there was no way I can supply it. They wanted jewelry with a story, there was accent that they come from Carbine Island because it's a large selling point. No, I understand that part, but you're, you're, at the moment, if they ask you today, you're able to upscale, is that right? Yes, yes I'm able to produce anything Fantastic. within reason. So, I, so, I, so we we're both in agreement that you can upscale yes, today. Yes, yes. So my question goes back to, you have an opportunity with this gentleman that you've spoken to, yes. I don't know how long ago you've had that conversation. Mm -hmm. You're in a position to upscale. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, why, I'm missing I, something? Why I'm not? Why I'm not there? Yeah. Well, we were invited to do. We were invited to do this. Part of the market that we're approaching, and the market we've literally tested. They would have to agree that the products that I that I show them, they like it to buy it. I already have a market here. People that buy my jewelry here, that love it here. But you and can this do both, this, no? I, yes, I yeah. can do both, but this opportunity presents itself. I seize the opportunity to be here. England has 66 million or more. Denmark has 7.5 million. No, I mean, I'm totally, <laughs> like, no, I, I'm in agreement with you. Yeah. I'm just thinking, you know, why, why, there's, why? There's, yes. you know, I mean, I could have 100 opportunities. I would cease to do all of them. If yeah. I, you but know. This, one came, this one came first. Oh, this, okay, <laughs> fine. Okay, all right. So you just chose to do this one first yes. rather than that opportunity yes. that was, you know, yes, the yes. guy was so excited. You shook hands. Where did you make it from? You came here first. Yes. I understand, no problem. Personally, if I was in your position, mm. I would have put that opportunity together, got some orders from him, mm. used that as a catalyst to actually pr to propose to, to stores here uh -huh. that you've already in a store in Denmark who are happy trading your, your products, making whatever margins they're making mm. as, a, as a sample to actually get into the stores there. That's Relatively it. right now, you're not in any store. Mm. You know, um, some... We, we know, we're now in the process, so we have applications at the airport where we're, giving, we're being promised a specific space in the, um, the interior of the, road, um, the airport. Yeah. They have two million plus persons passing through a year, and again, our projection is pretty good for that. We've, we've been to two companies already who have taken their products, we've taken their products into Selfridges, into Harrods and into John Lewis. So I came to the right place. You have come, well, I mean I do, I'm not an expert in the jewellery market, as long as they're making a decent margin, as long as it sells. Mm -hmm. The thing about retail is getting the first order is actually the easy part. 
you know, even mm -hmm. though it, it's as tough as, as it is to get yes. that first order. Getting the first large order from someone like Selfridges mm -hmm. is the easy part. It's then, to be do they sell? Mm -hmm. Are they making enough return? And will they continue the orders thereafter? But, um, but obviously, you know, it's a unique jewellery product. It has a nice message to it. But I agree. Um, if you have an opportunity right now in Denmark and he's saying, just out of interest, how long ago was that, was that conversation? Um, was that not you met? Three years ago. Three years ago. Um, you, look, hold on. <laughs> when was the last time you spoke to him? Um, about three months ago. I, th I think it's an interesting product. Um, I probably want to speak to you afterwards. But I think you, you, uh, you, know, I think you need to grab whatever opportunity that comes to you with both hands. <laughs> you set him, you set him here. <laughs> I can hear you but, set him up. But yeah, I don't mind speaking to you later, um, you know, and see if I can help you. I've just seen the investors and I had an absolutely fantastic experience. Pretty nerve-wracking to begin with, but in the end, absolutely fantastic. Factoid about the Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA. The EPA promotes innovation in the Caribbean region by strengthening industries such as information technologies and communication, eco-innovation, renewable energy and cultural industries. There are three more leading Caribbean companies with a chance to pitch their business model in London on Breakpoint after this. Now we move to online retail and technology company IL7. The Barbadian firm brands itself with the slogan, Think Caribbean Super Bowl Online. And the regional judges felt the firm was a strong contender. I thought his presentation was good. I think he gets a kudos for innovation. Company founder Byron Gibson had delivered well at his regional pitch in Barbados and believed strongly in his product's unique selling point. We want to be the, the definitive place for Caribbean culture globally. And for us, the sale of products is simply the physical transfer of culture between our region and the rest of the world. IL7 aims to position themselves to become the globally recognized and definitive online shopping resource for the Caribbean. Their solution includes the complete technology, marketing, payment processing and logistics support necessary for facilitating end-to-end -end commerce. Now on the brink of making his pitch to angel investors in London, company founder Byron Gibson was feeling tired but ready. I'm here in London feeling good, a lot tired because I've been busy in the few weeks leading up to Breakpoint and it's been hectic in the ground so far but all in all I'm pretty comfortable. Um, IL7 is basically um, a Caribbean marketplace for Caribbean made products. All the products you see on this page have a number of things in common. They're handmade in the Caribbean, they have what I refer to as wow appeals and consumers find them appealing and unfortunately they're all challenged in finding new markets. So what makes us special? We think that we're, we're, not, we're the first and only um, Caribbean e-commerce marketplace. We do have a couple of sites, for example, that sell small amounts of national products. There's no single site selling all of the Caribbean products in a single location. There are other e-commerce sites on, on, on the web, um, the big ones we all know of, but they don't focus on the Caribbean community. You will find a couple of odd products here and there, but they have not developed an orphan that's specific to us for our products, and it does not address the concerns that the vendors will have from a, from a commercial perspective. Um, we are also a company retail ecosystem. We're not just simply a front end site. We are a company retail with all the supporting structures in place to encourage and grow, and, and grow commerce. And we are designed specifically for our vendors and Caribbean vendors, all their concerns, the training, every aspect that goes into making them a bigger and better business over time. We have world class products, but we have limited infrastructure for supporting development of those products and businesses. We have limited cash and very little institutional appeal to financial organizations and we are always trying to reach new markets for our products. <coughs> um, this for me provides an opportunity for us to take Caribbean, the Caribbean to the world in a very new and innovative fashion. We imagine all the Caribbean products from all the countries available in one location and imagine something of a Caribbean super mall online. Uh, we are a shopping site, same as so many on the web, but there are some things that we believe make us unique and very individual. So we start with the basic shopping cart. <coughs> which is a world-class shopping cart allowing consumers to come and have the same experience they're accustomed to having in any shopping cart anywhere in the world. Um, logistics, though, becomes a real challenge. We are, a nation, we are a region of multiple islands, not a single continent, so we can't have central warehousing. We've had to put together a very unique solution allows us to be able to deliver our logistics to consumers and satisfy vendor requirements as well. Vendors typically, again, live in multiple countries. There's no common community for them, so we had to create an online community where vendors can also meet vendors and create a business support environment for them. Learning critical in the Caribbean because most of our people are self-taught artisans. Not 
unintelligent, but most of them simply haven't had the time to go ahead and complement or supplement their existing skills training with business skills. We opted to address it by building our own e-learning platform that allows us to deliver business skills training across to all of our vendor community. It does several mm. things. It improves them as a business person, but it also enhances and protects our brand on the front end because we now know what caliber of vendors we've got in the back end behaving business-wise with us. Um, data, currently a real issue in the Caribbean. There's very little or no market intelligence. So we figured if you're going to have that many vendors in one location, let's start to collect data with the interest or the, the intention of taking that data and trying to make better future decisions as well too. And what are we seeking? We are seeking approximately $1.5 million US for the rollout. And how is that spent? Uh, the vast majority is um, we need to have a, a strong international digital advertising partner. So if either a company provides the services to us as an investment or we're finding cash to find a company to do that for us. We have a Caribbean company who think is competent in, in developing our content and our positioning. We want to have someone who can take on the international world and get it out there for us in a, in a more robust fashion. Um, and that accounts for almost $1.1 million over an 18 month period. We understand that we're in a competitive industry. We want to keep on developing. We're happy with our platform so far. We've begun to develop version two. We want to keep on evolving that platform. We have a few more tricks planned. We want to have the cash to be able to continue to develop rather than waiting for revenues to pump back into the company to guarantee security. And we also want to hire some additional staff as well too over the next 18 months. Short and sweet. It was indeed a short and sweet presentation and no doubt Byron was hoping the investors thought so too. Investor Alexander Amosu wanted to ascertain the scope of his competition. How many competitors would you say you have in the Caribbean market that do exactly the same thing you're pitching? Oh, we have no competitors. Like we, we have maybe in the Caribbean we have three notable. I said I said notable because they are known. In terms of real commercial activity, I don't think that between them they compiled that they can do uh, a thousand sales a month. It's one of the reasons that they're not more competitors in this space that, that a lot of the online portals can't find the banks to do the bank reconciliation Quite in correct. terms of the daily transaction, Quite which correct. is an issue. And the second issue is that if you sell a $10 um, t-shirt to somebody who lives in Guyana and that t-shirt is being shipped correct. from um, another, the cost, what would the rollout cost be of that $10 t-shirt when you take in transportation into effect, which doesn't happen in the US because you can ship something for $3, okay. which you can't do in the Caribbean. Sure. So the first question, you're correct, um, we do suffer in the Caribbean with a lack of a supporting um, financial institution. Um, we've beaten that by simply locating our payment transaction business out to the Caribbean. And the, the clearing bank, the local clearing bank is okay with that? Yeah. So what we've done is again, we've negotiated, we, we spoke with several banks and they could facilitate us. The difficulty we had was that where we proposed to take our business, we were not happy with a bank who was going to respond to a request from us for how to drive e-commerce. We wanted a banking partner who could say, to, you know, here's what's happening next and here where you ought to go. So, yeah, so it's sufficient money. to say you've got yeah, the reconciliation got that sure. and, the, and the cost in terms of delivering right. the product. So we, uh, what we do is we, we can't centrally warehouse because we're coming from different countries. What we do is we have a multimodal logistics solution. So we have within the Caribbean, we have um, two regional airlines and what they will facilitate, they will facilitate courier shipping. A consumer ultimately chooses... Don't tell me the solution, just I'm a, on a $10 yeah. t-shirt I buy in Guyana. We have it covered. Yeah. How much? We, um, imagine postal costs. We have a partnership with your regional postal systems. 20 US dollars? Oh, no, 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 no. Maybe about a dollar fifty US in stamp. Okay, and that's secure? Yeah. Okay. Do you know what equity stake you're offering? Somewhere in the region of 20%. I think you've done a very good job there, especially given the character of vendor you're working with and their current circumstance. But you really do leave unanswered, to my mind, the question of how are you going to attract the world to your front door? Okay. It is the big challenge of this business. I can answer that for you. I, I wouldn't, I, I had to leave some questions for you to ask by the way. Oh, is that why you did that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th that is so okay. sweet. Yeah, we you can't cover Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so accommodating. I tap the Caribbean. We have, a, we have a natural pride in our region. We are always happy to share about the Caribbean. And what we've done, we've, we've, com we've, com we've I've constructed a fairly, what I think is a fairly clever affiliate program. We expect the first phase of growth to be almost all organic. And I want to see, we have no real data on e-commerce in the Caribbean. We have got, we got to go out and build our own data on which to make further assumptions. Yeah. So what I've done is created a traditional affiliate program in online business requires going out to a, a third party person who may shaft you know non-stop and you become tied to that person ad infinitum. What we've done is so let's, let's tap into the Caribbean willingness to share. So most shopping sites ask you to actually sign up to shop. We ask you to sign up to earn. 
So the first thing, we were going to our Caribbean community, those 10 million persons, and the intention is to encourage them through largely social media activity to sign up for our site to earn shopping commissions or shopping credits. Uh, we ask you to share with a number of friends. We can, when you sign up, we actually can track your activity beyond there. We ask you to share via social media, via email, and any other method. We can actually track the activity and we can actually reward you um, for your sharing the activity. For us, it's rather simple. It's also very inexpensive because the cost of acquiring a single new potential customer into our database that we can market to is beyond our imagination at present. So we're using the Caribbean region's natural desire to want to share good things to encourage them to share our site. That's, so we start from that perspective. Thanks, Barb. It was interesting, nothing surprising. It was, I think, everything I expected. We came as prepared as possible. We got some, I got some heavy interaction. I like when I get questions from all sections of the, um, the panel. So each person had a fairly interesting question and pretty certain it's had a spite of curiosity. The issue, of course, is to see where it goes from here. Um, I've already had a further conversation with two of the investors about what we could do next. Not necessarily making an investment, but certainly making connections for helping improve the business. So it's a win-win situation for me. We've got two more excellent businesses looking for their opportunity here on Breakpoint. We'll be right back. Barbadian company Pandora Security Systems offers transportation security solutions for shipping materials, ranging in size from envelopes to intermodal containers. They also offer remote examination capacity for non-intrusive inspection of these materials. Representative for the company is Information Systems Specialist, David Weeks. Our firm is an information communication technology firm. We develop a number of solutions in areas uh, which range from uh, tsunami dampers. Um, we have a portfolio of 17 patents and our firm essentially is developing a solution for uh, security for containers. Containers from mail, uh, envelopes, um, intermodal containers, anything that moves from one point of the globe to another point of the globe, we essentially provide security for. Pandora Security Systems Inc. offers a unique cutting-edge combination of hardware and software and CEO David Weeks was joined in his London presentation by business partner Byron Gibson. Regardless of their performance, David was confident in his belief that the technology would sell itself. When you're speaking to investors, it doesn't really matter the investor. Um, we're of the belief that they are all within the industry. The, the technology will sell itself. Um, and like with any pitch, you're basically going to come in and you're going to say, this is what we've got. And if it is consistent with their um, portfolio of investment, we'll get the funds. If not, we don't, but we still will continue from there. I want to start the presentation by first saying the problem that Pandora addresses. Um, you've got a problem across the face of the world of some $60 billion in pilferage, theft. Um, the issue of containers moving from one place to another place presents a number of challenges. Uh, the um, illegal contents is valued at some $2 trillion, cigarettes $2 billion, human trafficking, drugs, um, illegal arms. The challenge of examining containers is of such magnitude that only 1% of containers throughout the world, particularly in the United States and the United Kingdom, only 1% of the containers are examined. Um, what is Pandora? Pandora is a patented platform. Um, is a sheath that is a con contiguous wall um, that provides protection for the entire container. Um, in that regard, what we're able to address is the shipping of any type of package, whether it be diamonds, um, envelopes, luggage, the whole slew of what is traded from one place to another place. What makes Pandora unique is that Pandora gives an envelope. Whereas existing technologies only protect the door of the container, Pandora connects, connects the walls, the four walls, the back, floor. Um, illicit contents, Pandora scans the contents. It allows you to know whether they're drugs, illegal arms, humans and um, explosives. It will permit 100% any container that is going to be outfitted with the Pandora case and brace technology will move from 1% up to 100% for all containers that are going to be vastly outfitted.
we will be able to offer these services to mail provisioners, the UPSs, um, standard container providers, um, luggage and crates, Samsonites, the container providers, the Maersk of the world, and of course to the end, uh, the end user, individuals who are using luggage and you've got your laptop and the whole slew of things. That's the range for clientele. With the potential investor, um, with investments, I'm sorry, um, we believe that Pandora can be in the market within six months and viable beyond that. Because we're pretty much ready to go to market because we have a working prototype, we've done our bits and pieces, and it's simply a matter of finding the capital required to go into the miniaturization process. Um, the Pandora case and break the mat variant, which will go towards the luggage and containers, we perceive 11 months, so between six, five months beyond the first introduction, we go towards that. Uh, and the return on the investment we're projecting for any investor is approximately 33% over the yield period. Together, David Weeks and Byron Gibson had represented the company well, and investor Mark Lewis was interested to ascertain their current capital outlay on research and development thus far. Um, how much have you spent on uh, um, research and development to get to this point? Um, roughly $3 million US. And what percentage of that um, $3 million US have you apportioned to um, ensuring that your software and hardware can't be breached? Breached in terms of the patent protection? Yeah. How, how secure is this for somebody what? to hack the, uh, the, the, the oh, system? Right now it's inviolable. Well, how, what much we did did you, what? how much did you spend of the three million? 60% went into that. Okay. Um, when you see the schema, you would say it's one of the most simplistic things. Imagine the Christmas tree, the lights on a Christmas tree. Yeah. And that's imagine a, That's a physical breach. What about a software breach? Because it, it, it relies on technology. Um, each system, every one of the systems has a unique key. Anyone who goes to tamper with it, it automatically changes the reading in the system. So it's it's sealed. As long as it is sealed, it has one reading. Thereafter, anything after that is a breach. If, if someone by accident punctures the side of the so container, it, that is a breach. The short answer is, it, it's, from your perspective, it's, it's uncrackable. Yes. From our perspective, no. Based upon what we've done with the system, no. I'm now getting a flavor of the complexity of the solution. It's a very rich solution in many ways. 15 million pounds for product development would be the highest number I've ever seen for a product development phase. Is that just for the development of the product or does that take you much, much further? It really is taken, we've developed the product, we've got a working prototype, it is for the miniaturization, miniaturization. process. So we've passed R&D at this, we're looking towards cash for rollout purposes. Yes. So I'm sorry, we, so what, does what, the whole what, 15 million go into the miniaturization process? Yeah, what we have at present is we have a physical, con um, a truck, a containerized truck, we've actually outfitted tested it robustly for the past 18 months. But you got nodes this big, right? Yes, they're really and, and now, I'm and, sure. And, yeah, and the miniaturization process. Again. And how confident are you that it's miniaturizable to the sizes that would be necessary? Yeah. Well, the, the schematics, as you, you would be aware with any type of electronic device, the schematics, we use the resources that we had. I appreciate you couldn't build it small, but I'm asking you what's your confidence that it can be Absolutely built small. Absolutely confident. We happen to have three engineers so you've got the time. design schematics of the miniaturized product yes. already. Yes. You didn't say that, so it's helpful. But it's sure. fine. We'll get it out in conversation. Yeah, of course. You're obviously going to have to achieve scalable sales in order to make this business a viable business. I'm, I'm, it may be I'm just missing it, but it's not clear to me how it's necessarily in the interest of the, the container owner operator to invest, which will be a considerable amount of money in their part, mm -hmm. in the retrofitting of their Kit. In other words, it's to the benefit of the whole ecosystem. Sure. It's to the benefit of a nation. It's to the benefit of the drug patrollers. It, there's many people who benefit. But is it to the commercial benefit of the guy who moves the containers? Because that's who you're asking to pay for it. Well, costs are always passed on to your find the end, the end, end, end user anyway. Not necessarily. Businesses fail. Well, but when you consider the compliance requirements of the world, CSI right now in the United States has invested in CSI to the degree that they're now outfitting countries um, with CII, CSI yep. compliant capacity and sending personnel into these jurisdictions. When you consider 178 countries no, around the I world. I don't disagree with that. I profoundly agree with you that the United States government is putting a huge amount of capital into that. Clearing 
Clearing customs is something. Are you telling that me that they will clear customs at such a rate of increase yes. based on your system at the cost it would take to implement this that the mere speed up yes. would make this system affordable? That is correct. Okay, you need to make that economic case if you're going to be asking for 15 million quid from someone. Well, you, you understand that's a, that's not how you make your case. We met three investors, um, varying skill sets, uh, various questions were asked relative to the readiness of the company, the capacities. One particular gentleman, he was extremely thorough, he was techie oriented, so, but it was a very um, interesting exercise. Here's a little bit more about the Economic Partnership Agreement. The EPA strengthens institutional transparency by mandating the dissemination of information such as the results of tenders and the maintenance of the list of providers in public access via electronic means. See how the final Canada performs at their presentation to angel investors and venture capitalists in London when we return on Breakpoint. Building on years of experience with their parent magazine, Island Life Television was intent on promoting the Caribbean as an exotic travel destination. Island Life TV, I thought, competed for the presentation of the day. They could certainly sell the Caribbean. They'll be, they'll be great. At their regional pitch in Barbados, Christine Ferreira and Sandra Bosher were confident in the strength of their brand. We've created a brand, Island Life, which depicts Caribbean lifestyle excellence. And we're bringing Island Life to the world. Island Life had come a long way since the early days almost 15 years ago. Throughout the development of their brand and their company, Island Life has remained committed to their vision of showcasing the quality of life in the Caribbean by highlighting the quintessential Caribbean lifestyle and travel culture. In advance of her presentation in London, CEO Christine Ferreira was feeling self-assured and ready. Well, I'm here in London. I've made it this far and I'm quite excited. I think I'm at the starting gate like all the Olympians, and I'm ready to see my investors. Hello and welcome to Entertaining by Design. And you're invited to join our top designers and chefs as we explore a whole new world of entertaining with style. I'm Christine Ferreira, and we're entertaining by design. 14 years ago, our associated company, Island Life Media Group, created the Island Life brand by producing a magazine featuring our exotic Caribbean lifestyle. Today, Island Life has become a household name regionally. We're distributed on newsstands throughout the region, the US, and Canada. And we can be found around the world in many homes. Riding on the legacy of our magazine, the next phase of our brand expansion was incorporating Island Life Television, producing lifestyle television programs highlighting our Caribbean life. The first program, Island Life Styles, mirrored the magazine's content, and the second, Island Life Destinations, was more of a travel program. We produced two seasons of each program, reaching 2.4 million viewers in prime time in 20 Caribbean islands. Both programs received regional acclaim, but our goal was to gain a niche position in the international market. We spent the last three years developing our programs, researching distributors, producing pilots, and assembling the right production crew. In 2011, we produced a series you just saw, Entertaining by Design, and it aired earlier this year in the Caribbean. Under our business model, we develop the program content in-house. We outsource our production. We negotiate prime time spots with the regional free-to-air distributors, and we sell advertising to regional and international companies like um, CIBC, Cartier, Hilton International. Revenues are also generated through product placement within each episode. And because we retain the rights, uh, we retain control of all the rights, we can uh, generate additional revenues through other avenues like digital media. Our underlying magic is simply that we are the Caribbean. We live in the Caribbean, we breathe it, we create it, and more importantly, we understand it. We have a passion for producing high quality Caribbean content and showing what others can only just imagine. 
we are seeking strategic partnerships to help us improve our planning production, develop marketing and sales channels, and to seek international distribution. Island Life has a brand legacy. We have an extremely experienced team, and we have a burning passion to produce high quality Caribbean programs. We recognize that there's a demand for global and entertaining media and content. We are from the Caribbean. We have identified a niche for supplying that content, Caribbean content, to the international market. And we are ready to do so. There's interest in things Caribbean at this point in time. We have the Olympics that has just taken place. A lot of Caribbean people who have won gold medals, all eyes are on the Caribbean. <laughs> All eyes on the Caribbean, and we can supply content to continue to boost international sales. It's a confident pitch, but investor Mark Lewis needed hard facts. What is it that you're offering, and what is it that you want? I am looking for international distribution okay. and technical assistance in the line of international editors and, um, and um, not producers, but directors. So you're not because looking for money? There's, there's, you're not looking for money? Not necessarily. Okay. okay. Are you building your business on a free-to-air business model or on a pay TV? Is it mostly free-to-air? At the moment, in, within the region, it's free-to-air. Right. Are you aware that globally, free-to-air is in decline and pay TV is in ascendance? Yes. yes. So we're, we're hoping that as we get into the international market, we'll be able to go the other way. How many hours worth of content do you own? Right now we have 58 episodes and they are 30 minutes long. Okay. And um, how many markets are you currently in? At this point we only, within the Caribbean, we do 20, we cover 20 Caribbean destinations mm -hmm. and we're shown in prime time in those destinations. So just for, for, for interest sake of revenue, 58 episodes viewed by 2.4 million, million people so far. They've been aired across 20 Caribbean countries so far, you mentioned. What type of uh, uh, ad revenue were you able to generate from that initial launch? 300,000 US. Okay. Yeah. From how many different companies? Um, they were... Or agencies? About 10. Okay. Yeah. And does that cover the cost of production? Yes, at this point in time. But what we really want is to step up the plate and uh, produce a program that can really get into the international market. And this last program that we did, Entertaining by Design, had more of the qualities than our older programs. So that is why we're looking for technical assistance to help us to edit our programs to international standards. Because in the Caribbean, we don't really send our programs beyond the region. Yeah. I mean, this is not my space, but would the content like this, do you think, would work in the African market in terms of? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think it, lifestyle television programming is very in vogue right now and that's, that's what everybody wants to watch. So we can create whatever we need to. I think that Mark's comments and insights have demonstrated to me why I don't get involved in markets I don't know anything about. <laughs> because he very quickly identified everything I could have possibly thought that I hadn't. And so I'm going to basically say whatever Mark said, I completely agree with <laughs> Christ, no. Yeah. Good. Yeah, he's good. He's the man to talk to. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, what can I say? <laughs> I can smell an expert in a room. Yeah. In a nutshell, there are a number of uh, pay TV providers around the world, platforms like Jump Television, that, keep, that cater to niche demographics, which is who you uh, appeal to, but on a global basis. Yeah. So they'll, uh, they, they'll target those niche demographics and they'll share ad revenue with you and you can build organically that way. But for the growth that I think that you want, I think you need more volume. Understood. Thank you. Well, I went to see the investors and um, I thought it was a very good exercise, very informative. I learned a little bit more about my business and where I should be going with it. And I'm very happy that I did so. I think a lot will come out of it. Let's recap this week's contestants. Bespoke handcrafted jewelers, Christian Fries, was looking for an opportunity to break into Europe. Sole proprietor Keith Shepard felt Breakpoint was an excellent experience and really stretched him professionally. 
my experience in Breakpoint has pretty much stretched me out. I've learned things that I never thought was necessary, that I never thought was needful. Um, it forced me to grow in areas that I thought, and then use muscles that I have not used for. <laughs> so it's pretty brilliant. I, I, I rate my experience as a top class. Online retail and technology company, Aisle 7, aims to position themselves to become the globally recognized virtual shopping resource for the Caribbean. Company founder Byron Gibson highlighted what was the real win of the Breakpoint initiative for him. The real win for me with Breakpoint is to be um, is to be with pedigree entrepreneurs. Um, you're not going to put Usain Bolt to run at a school meet, for example. You want to have him compete with people of his caliber. You want to have an Olympic 100 meter finals. Um, so for me, the real the real takeaway was being in an environment where you have a chance to be. Um, enjoying some fellowship at that level um, and overall I say Breakpoint is well run, I rate it fairly highly and I'm looking forward to see where it goes in next year and the year beyond that for example. I'm thinking it'll be, a, it'll be something that over the years we can look back and see how Breakpoint has helped to evolve a number of Caribbean companies. Pandora Security Systems offers transportation security solutions for shipping materials and was seeking investors in Europe. Information Systems Specialist and CEO David Weeks recognized the opportunities that the Breakpoint Initiative could avail his company. The Breakpoint Initiative has been extremely uh, useful to our company, quite advantageous. You should first understand that within the Caribbean region there are not many um, facilitating vehicles for intellectual property. Um, there are certain assets, we're not mortars and, mortar and bricks we deal with an area where it's a non-tangible. Um, coming to Breakpoint has been very advantageous because what it's been able to do is to pair intellectual property with the necessary resources which we pretty much needed um, and we're very appreciative of. Multimedia lifestyle brand Island Life Television aims to educate the European audience on the quality of life in the Caribbean through their television productions. CEO Christine Ferreira welcomed the experience of the Breakpoint Initiative and the opportunities that prevail. This Breakpoint has been a good experience. We've met quite a few people who can guide us and get us into a different level in our business where we're aiming to get into the international market and I really enjoyed it. Don't miss the final episode of Breakpoint next week where we see how the 12 firms have taken advantage of their once-in-a-lifetime opportunity in London, right here on Breakpoint. Here is the contact information for each of the firms represented in today's show. We wish all our firms every success with their business. So I say, let's plan our vacation and suddenly everyone's on liat.com. My wife announces shailiat.com, a nice hotel near restaurants and shopping malls. Hmm, must hide credit card. The kids want to liat.com fun activities and since someone has to be the sensible one, I'll liat.com flights, our travel insurance and a car. Well, sort of sensible. <laughs> liat.com. What else do you need?